Hey everybody, it's the 16-Bit Professor here, and I'm bringing you the episode 1 of the 16-Bit Pathfinder How-To. Um, so in this we're going to be making maps, and uh, you can see that I've got a grid turned on by using the third layer, the event layer, or you can use the first layer without a grid. I actually don't use grids um, in my campaigns, so we're going to go ahead and use the first layer, but um, you know, obviously do whatever, whatever you like. Uh, we need to memorize the dimensions of the map because if we want um, the tokens in our Roll20 campaign to be roughly the same size, uh, we want to make the map in Roll20 be the same dimensions. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller uh, just for simplicity's sake. Um, I find that not using the grid works a little better um, if you're doing 16-bit because you're not quite top-down. And um, the grid squares don't quite work out as well with uh, without a ex perfect top-down perspective. So you're literally just going to screenshot using the print screen button, button on your keyboard and uh, we're going to paste it into paint and um, I'm just going to fiddle with this for a minute to to uh, just copy and paste it into a new a new document. Um, <clears throat> I kind of did a bad job. I left that little tool tip up when I took my screenshot but but that's fine. Um, th like I said, this is one of the um, this is actually one of the original chipsets in RPG Maker, so it's pretty rudimentary looking. Um, you can use nicer chip sets. sets uh, there's custom ones people have made that look a lot nicer, and uh, you can just also find a lot of pre-made maps on online, and um, that look really really nice. And even just use sprites from from other games. Uh, so now that we've uh, got this in its own. We've pulled it out of the rest of the screenshot. We're going to go ahead and just save it uh, in my folder here. And let's see, castle example. And uh, <coughs> we're going to upload it directly into Roll20. So Pixlr um, is a good program to edit and kind of do this stuff. We'll deal with Pixlr a lot more in our next video, which is the character sprite creation. Um, we're literally just going to select our castle, upload it, and then it should be ready to go in our Roll20 game here directly. Um, <clears throat> so we'll make a new map, and uh, right off the bat we'll want to make sure that the grid is turned off, uh, because it's going to snap our picture to that grid uh, if we if we don't leave, turn it off. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that, and we'll make sure that we set the map to the dimensions that we had in RPG Maker. That way it can turn out with the same um, ratio as our as our original. Uh, so I'm just going to search for it and you can see I've got a lot of, a lot of other nicer looking ones here um, and uh, but we're going to go ahead and use this example and we're just going to literally drag it to the uh, to fit the the map uh, and that's and that's really pretty much all there is to it um, you can from here go right back into the token layer and start adding your players and and uh, your your villains and or, or NPCs and uh, pretty much be ready to play. So the next episode will be how to create um, good character sprites and tokens. And uh, hope you uh, watch it, tune in, and enjoy. And hope uh, hope everyone likes the video.